Let's go into the book of Leviticus. We are in the 11th chapter. We're dealing with the health laws. We're dealing with, amen, what is clean, what animals are clean, and what animals are not clean. Um, once again, like I said before, the, the theological question uh, is, what came first, scripture or, or oral tradition? And so the answer to that question is uh, oral tradition. Amen. Scripture, the word, uh, stories of the Bible, Noah, and all those different stories were handed down from father to son, mother to daughter. It was handed down from generation to generation. And many of these animals that you're going to be hearing being read today, uh, we don't even know what they, they don't translate to uh, to English. Um, the first one where they talked about the Cooney, the, the, the Coney, what we say Coney because of up in Brooklyn, Coney Island. Amen. And that name is a Dutch name. Amen. The Dutch named the Coney Island because the island was full of rabbits. And Coney means rabbit. Amen. But you see, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's just, just so we can get understanding of the text and that or tradition came before scripture. And so a lot of these scriptures was written and translated and it, the translation didn't make it to English. And so, um, and some of these are mistranslated because you have on the fifth verse, you have, and the Cooney, and then the sixth verse says, and the hare, a hare is a rabbit. So it's either it's repeating itself or it's talking about two different animals. And I'll get into the specifics of the animal when we get to that verse. But uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, that we, it, when you're trying to get to understand the text, then you know a little bit better that um, it was it was or tradition that came first and scripture came afterwards. So those that wrote down the story might not even have known uh, what the local animal was you know, in that particular case or the, the local definition of what they was writing. They just wrote the story. And so that's what we need. I, I was trying to explain to you so you can understand a little bit better that a lot of these translations uh, would not be current to what actually Moses wrote. And so, uh, and even with that, it's the overall story and, and God closes it out. Moses writes it out at the end of the chapter and, and gives the explanation as why God wanted them to do this. And that's the purpose. So the different animals and the mistranslations and all those things, uh, they're important, but but they're not they're not vital to the overall story and and the purpose in which God told them to do it. All right. Chapter eleven. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth, whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. All right, so a lot of the country folk know what a cud is. The animals have, they regurgitate and they chew and they, they chew it to break it down even more and even more and even more. So chewing the cud is just they have multiple stomachs and they're able to regurgitate it and chew on it. Uh, and, you know, the camels and different animals, they can go long distances. Uh, without eating and because they chew on it all day and so they can they it, it lasts a long time Nevertheless these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hoof as the camel Because he cheweth the cud but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you Okay, so his hoof he has a the hoof is not divided. So therefore it is unclean unto the children of Israel and the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Now, the the coney, when I looked that up, he said it was, it was more like a badger. Um, it had teeth like a rhinoceros, had feet like an elephant. It lived in the mountains, and it lived in, in the rocks, and so it wasn't really like a rabbit uh, but in some translation it said a long ear rabbit and so but I looked in the biblical dictionaries and the uh, um, 
the Hebrew and Jewish dictionaries, the definitions, and it talked about an animal that had feet like an elephant and it had uh, teeth like a rhinoceros, and so it was it wasn't nowhere near a rabbit basically, and so it, it mouth moved and the hair the mouth is moving and it's chewing its food as well, and so uh, like I say you can get in technical detail about what each animal each animal is. But God gives the purpose of why they had to do this at the end of the chapter. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, they are unclean to you. Not only are they not supposed to eat it, they're not supposed to touch it at all. You meet people of, of the Jewish faith, uh, even uh, uh, Islamic when it comes to uh, swine because they don't eat pig they don't eat uh, any kind of pork uh, well they're not supposed to <laughs> I've met a few that did but uh, uh, they're not supposed to eat according to scripture uh, the pig and they have nothing to do with the lobster and, and uh, shellfish anything like that they won't mess with it uh, because it's unclean these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Okay, so when we're talking about abomination to you, and you should detest it. You should actually hate it. You should, you should be indignant about touching the now oh that looks that lobster looks so good oh, that bacon smells so good i want to slide can i give me a blt on rye and, and you know with a pickle you know it's, it, he's saying abomination mean you should hate it as much as i hate it i and not that he hates it because he created it but i i want to bring distinction between you and everybody else uh so i need i need you to follow my rules and I need you to follow my way of doing things. You're learning how to get away from Egypt, get away from a, a Egypt mentality, away a, away from the old man. And I need you to bring you to the new man. And the new man is really the original man, uh, the man that I created to be holy and the woman that I created to be holy and righteous and pure before me. And so, uh, but I need you to follow me down this road uh, to get there. And this is the road he gave to the children of Israel to get to holiness and righteousness. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ossifrid and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Kite is a vulture, Osifre is a, um, I mean, Osifre is a vulture, Kite is a, is, a, is a falcon, and so those are different, I looked it up because I didn't know what they were, so, and some of these, if you don't know what they are, some of them we, we talk about today, some are not, like I said, or tradition came before scripture, so. Every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cook owl, and the hawk after his kind. And the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all fours, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat. The locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Now when I saw this, uh, washing your clothes and being unclean until the evening, um, uh, it, it, it kind of amazed me because of in the kitchen, in the culinary uh, study and training, um, we learned that 
washing your dishes and, and your plates and your pots and, and everything, it do kill bacteria. But if you've ever been in science class and you looked in the microscope and looked at water, water has bacteria in and of, of itself. So you're kind of washing dirt with bacteria. And so even when you wash something uh, and clean it, it's not actually, the bacteria don't actually die in some cases until the plate is dry, until the bowl is dry, until it dries. And so the removal of the water, so you can wash something in hot, hot water, as hot as you can stand it and, 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 and put it up. But if that water, while it's still wet, it still has bacteria on it. And so uh, it, it's the process of drying that removes the last of that bacteria. And, and in a lot of cases, like the swine, and a lot of these animals was treated, it's not treated like this, the, the pork in, in, you get a giant in the, on the, on the, in the meat section that's been cut and processed and, and, and it's nice and pure and clean in some cases. They put chemicals and stuff today. But uh, the swine wasn't treated as well as they are today. And so, and a lot of these different animals were dirty animals and they were treated dirty. Uh, and so, and, and I don't want to get too crass, but, but they were treated dirty and I'll just leave it at that. And so in a lot of cases, God didn't want them to um, be subject to getting sick. And, and so to stay away from some of these animals. But it just amazed me how God said, when you wash, let it dry, basically. You know, it's unclean till even. And we now know that the drying process is just as important as this washing process as far as killing bacteria is. Um, so I was just, that was just my little sidebar. I, I was just amazed at how God was just um, uh, protecting them. And, so, and that's why we need to be obedient because we never know sometimes why God is doing what he's doing. But if we just follow him, if you're willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even, even is evening. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the even. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, whereinto any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it, shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. Amen. The earthen vessels were pots and they washed, they cooked in some of them, they boiled, they were strong enough to cook in and boil different things in. Some earthen vessels was used to put money in, they, they buried it, and we're going to get into that later on in the chapters. And so they were different, they was used for different things. And so, and it was, some of them were sealed up, kind of like, you know, a crock pot. You, you could, you would give them the, you give them the pot, like the Jiffy Pop, Jiffy Pop popcorn came with the seeds inside and everything already in it so you could just uh you could just take the paper off and put it right on the stove and pop you ain't got to worry about going get anything everything was right there so that's what kind of what some of those earthen vessels when they gave them as a gift all they all the person had to do was put it on the fire it was already sealed the, the spices and everything was already in there all they had to do was just put it on the fire cook it and it was already ready to go and so, um, so he, God was telling, even when you're preparing, uh, if, you, if something fall in there that's unclean, something fly in there that's unclean, uh, you got to clean, you got to take it out. You got if it's in the vessel, you got to break it and, and use a different vessel. Uh, you, you don't want to chance the fact that one you'll eat it or you give it to somebody 
uh, something that's unclean. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean. And all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean. Whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down. For they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. Again, any cooking equipment, anything that you're using, amen. If something unclean hits it or touch it, it is unclean because it, something unclean touched it. If we ever treated Satan like that, we, we would be some powerful believers and some powerful Christians. If we just knew everything we did according to Satan or did it, anything according to the flesh, we are unclean until we get right back with God. It's a good metaphor for us as believers. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. God's trying to cover all the bases. Make sure you guys understand. I, I don't want any any mingling with clean and unclean. I, I, I want you to live a clean life. You are my clean people. You work, you're, you're serving a clean God. And so I, I want my the clean God to have clean people, amen, and be the example to this to this dirty world. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. Anything you eat, touch, taste, come in contact with, that's outside of the will of God, that's unclean, you become unclean because of your contact with the unclean. Lord, that'll preach all by itself. Here's the purpose. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. I am holy. I am your holy God. I, I need you to be sanctified. I set, sanctified means to be set apart. So you, you have to set yourself aside. And you, you, where well, you can't do it. The only way you can be set aside is by following the one that is set aside. God is holy. There's no good thing in the flesh. So we can't use the flesh and sin and Satan as a means of becoming closer to God. The more we do that, the more we yield to the flesh, Satan, and 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 and, and, our, and sin, the further away we get from God. And so we want to draw nigh unto Him, and we want Him to draw nigh unto us. Amen. We have to live a holy life before the Lord. He said, "For I am." Get this part. That's the purpose. And this is the purpose for all Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Amen. Amen. Half of Genesis. Amen. This is the purpose. For I am the Lord your God. And ye shall therefore sanctify, Lord Jesus, if we ever got that, sanctify yourself, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Hallelujah. Holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God, Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Again, I am the God that brought you out of bondage, that brought you out of sin, that delivered you from suffering, who saved you from yourself, who saved you from darkness, and brought you into this place. And, and where, I, where you are now is, is not the end of the journey. I have I, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither have it entered the hearts of men. I have, I have so, a blessedness for you. I have a place for you. 
Amen. Hallelujah. That that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a promised land that, that I promise to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it's so important for us to get this and understand that he, the one that brought him out of the land of Egypt, amen, brought us from ourselves, our past, amen, hallelujah, to be your God and you therefore be holy for I am. That's what he is. Hallelujah. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. The, the physical and, and the spiritual. The physical, the difference between the clean and the unclean shows... <laughs> Lord Jesus shows the difference of whether you are clean or unclean. You're clean or unclean based upon your obedience to eat that which is clean or unclean. Again, we are right back in the Garden of Eden. The, the question is always asked many times when we read Genesis. Why did he put the tree there? If he hadn't have put the tree there, they wouldn't have ate the, the forbidden fruit. But it wasn't their eating of the forbidden fruit that caused their sin. It was their disobedience to the will of God, what God told them not to do. So he's God. He's Lord of their lives. And because of their disobedience, they disobeyed God and they fell into sin by disobedience, not by eating the forbidden fruit. They disobeyed God. And so now here we go once again, 47 verse, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. And you are what you eat. Lord Jesus, that's a word. That'll preach all by itself. Hallelujah. You are what you eat. And so when you eat and unclean, you become what you eat. And so, and, and well, I like, I, I like this. I like that. And I, I want to, I want to eat this and I want to have that. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not and we say favor's not fair we say it in a positive sense amen like I got something that nobody else can get and you can't get it because I got God and God favors me God favors me we sing the song hallelujah hallelujah but favor has a responsibility as well hallelujah so because God favors you yes he does because you are his favorite uh, but amen there comes from a responsibility with that and so you know, be a, to be his favorite he said I am holy you have to be holy because I am holy and if you want me to really favor you and give you the blessings of the Lord and have the blessings of the Lord uh, that maketh rich and hath no sorrow amen then we need to know that God requires us to be like him we're made mm, mm, mm. Lord isn't God word is good God word is, is, is so good hallelujah he created us in his image and in his likeness, the devil came to separate us from his image and his likeness. And the devil came to bring darkness. The thief coming but to steal, kill, and to destroy. He brought darkness to separate us from our original design, our original creation. And we, we come out the closet and tell everybody what we are. Amen. Because of what the devil has told us we were. Hallelujah. You shall not die, but he know that the day you eat thereof, you're going to be like God's. You're going to be like him, knowing good and evil. Let me let me let you in on a little secret. Hallelujah. Let me let you in on something that he's not telling you. And that's the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but Jesus said, I am come, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so God was, was trying to commune, realign the people of God, line them up with, Amen. The word of God and the truth of his word in the in the in the corporal, the physical, amen, hallelujah, rituals and rules and regulations that they had to do to become closer to God. And so people think you have to be more spiritual. You gotta get stones and, and all these crystals and all these things to become more spiritual. You need to be enlightened. You need to smell vapors and amen. All these different things to become more enlightened. And under, no, they're, they're, they're disciplined. You have to be a discipline, a disciple. You have to be a disciplined follower of God to please God. Hallelujah. Be without faith, it's impossible. 
Hallelujah. He that cometh to me must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder that to, to them that dis, uh, diligently seek him. And so we need to seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, and to be close to him. Amen. As Fred sings the song, just to be close to you. Amen. Is my desire. And if we want to be close to him. We have to obey him. Hallelujah. My sheep heareth my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. My people, y'all, I just told you about the Jewish people and the kosher meals and the different things. Hallelujah. And so they they are those that, you know, they you know, you got some in every crowd, amen, that 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 disobey, amen, and don't follow the rules. But for the most part, most of them will not touch any of these things today because of what God said back he, back in Leviticus. Amen. Through through the, his servant Moses. Amen. They won't touch it today. And you won't you can and matter of fact, they'll get up they it's abominable to them. Amen. Amen. So they they hate the fact that you would even Amen suggest that they eat pork or anything like that. Or shellfish or anything like that. They they get irate about it because God told them to become irate about it. It should become abominable to you. And so you you should hate it. You should hate it like I hate it. Like I hate your 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 sin like i hate your separation from me like i hate you serving satan it should be abominable to you you should hate it you should hate it the uh, roman says abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good hallelujah we should hate evil we should hate the fact that satan is using god's people who we birth for righteousness and purity hallelujah and, and satan has defiled and, and blinded them, the eyes of them that would believe if they didn't have their eyes blinded because they looked at the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And they fell into darkness by listening to Satan, just like Adam and Eve. And so here it is once again. God has said to make a difference. Man, if we ever get any scripture, Lord, let, let's get this 11th chapter, 47 verse, to make a difference between unclean and clean hallelujah hallelujah and the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten your obedience shows who you are it shows who you are amen it shows who you are and it's by you you are what you eat you eat vegetables and you eat the things that you're supposed to eat a balanced meal you your your body you become healthy and you start feeling better you eat all this processed food and all these different things. They think the tobacco company is rough. Let me tell you something. The the, the, the food industry, the, the tobacco people can learn some stuff from the food people because they make that stuff just short enough of killing you. And some of it will kill you anyway. They just wanted to pass the FDA. Hallelujah. As long as it passed the test, amen, we can put it on the shelf. And so they'll put all the chemicals. Look at the trans fats. Oh, we can take it out, and you won't even notice the difference. Then why would they went in there in the first place? To to get you hooked on and to get you. So 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 that's that's the that's the enemy. The enemy. You think he's doing you a favor, but he's not. He's killing you all the all the while. And, and we think we free in Satan. Oh, we don't have to deal with them rules and regulations and religion and dogma. I don't have to deal with all those things. I'm free. I want to be free. I want to do what I want to do. God, don't God want me to be happy? Yes, he do. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. So if we if we live according to his word and follow him, everything is going to be all right. Amen. To make a difference, saints, we got to make a difference. To make a difference, you got to be different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Between unclean and clean. You are. You are <laughs> what you eat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are there any questions or comments about this 11th chapter of the book of Leviticus? Are there any questions or comments? Amen. Are there any prayer requests at this time?
Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Anybody else have a prayer request? Amen. Let's, let's look to the Lord. God, we just thank you for another Bible class. We thank you for another opportunity to share the word, to walk down through the scriptures, to get a better understanding of the word of God, the truth of God's word, and to to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the truth and we thank you hallelujah that we have to show a difference between clean and unclean amen holy and unholy amen hallelujah we have to show forth the praises of you lord god that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light just like the children of israel were taken out of bondage amen of egypt lord god you took us out of the bondage of sin and brought us into this marvel we're going to walk in the light hallelujah it's a beautiful light Hallelujah. We're going to come with the dewdrops of mercy shine bright shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, you are the light of the world. And we just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for another uh, Wednesday night Bible class. And we thank you for another lesson uh, learned. Amen. Hallelujah. From amen. this book of Leviticus in this chapter number 11. We just thank you for God's people those that are on the journey with us through God's word and you heard the prayer request to bless the home the fields family Lord God we ask you to bless that family and the children and the grandchildren and all the greats and everybody Lord God and other household of faith all those that are listening those that are watching amen via our YouTube channel our Agape Web TV Lord God we ask you to bless touch and deliver right now make a way out of nowhere open doors that seem closed move in the hearts and minds of your people Lord God, help us to, amen, show a difference between clean and unclean. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we ask you to bless right now. Keep us under your blood. You've given us your word. You've given us your spirit. We have better than the children of Israel had at that time. Hallelujah. Because we had the we have the Holy Ghost down on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Lord God, to lead and guide us to all truth. Bless us. Touch and deliver right now. Uh, those in the hospitals, institution, prison, war, the still bereaved, the Halsley family, Lord God, those in bereavement, amen, even the Fields family, amen, and their loss, and all those suffering under, amen, in South Carolina, and all the victims of hate, amen, all over the world, Lord God, we send out love to them, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we just thank God for your blessings, and thank you, God, for your another day that you've given to us to give you glory, honor, and praise, and we just thank you, we praise you. Hallelujah. We magnify your holy name. These long blessed we ask in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. We thank God for you uh, again for tuning in to our Bible class. Amen. Another Wednesday night. Amen. The great theological question. Remember, amen. What came first? Uh, or tradition or scripture? And we need to understand that or tradition came before scripture. Amen. And so, um, and as we take this journey, we just we just bless God for the people that are taking the journey with us. And we thank God for you. And keep agape in prayer as we pray for you. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, Bible class, Tuesday noonday prayer. Thank Mother Fields, amen, for handling that prayer on yesterday. And we salute her and Brother Marshall Fields and their 56 years, amen, of marriage. Amen. We thank God for them. I have to because know them, know me. Hallelujah. But even if I wasn't their child, I would thank God for them in the name of Jesus and their uh, continual love and support for me. Amen. Uh, and the family and amen. Me and at the church and and I just I'm just grateful to the Lord uh, for all those that He blessed Agape with. Amen. Hallelujah. In our eight years as we celebrate tonight, I forgot to mention. I just thought about it. Amen. Tonight is the eighth. Amen. The eighth. Amen. A day. Amen. Hallelujah. Of our eighth year. Amen. Today is Agape Day. Hallelujah. So this is the actual day. We started on the eighth day of July, eight years ago. Amen. And so we're just grateful to the Lord. And I'm, I have too many things I could say right now. Amen. We'd be here at 10 o'clock with me talking about the blessings of the God and the privilege I've had uh, pastoring. Amen. And leading God's people. And I, it's been an honor and it's been an absolute privilege 
to do that. Amen. And I wouldn't take nothing for the journey, the hills and the valleys. Amen. Hallelujah. But I just thank God for that, just that opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. Just to, just to be where God wanted me to be and to do what God told me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I just, I'm just grateful to the Lord for you, God's people. Amen. Amen. And I'm just grateful too for the journey and I'm grateful. Amen. Hallelujah too. Amen. Uh, the people of Agape and the other pastors and leaders and those that poured in and those that helped. Amen. And spending and sending help from unexpected sources. And I just, I'm just grateful. Amen. No regrets. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to the Lord. Hallelujah. And as we go on and continue the journey and go on the new beginning. Amen. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Uh, I'm just grateful to uh, what the Lord has in store for Agape in the future. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, and neither have it entered the hearts of men. Amen. The things God has prepared for them that love him. And so I'm just grateful to the Lord. I'm looking to this next year with great expectations. Amen. For what the Lord is going to do for this ministry in this upcoming year. Amen. We celebrating on the 18th of July, July the 18th at two o'clock. Right, we're asking everybody to come out and help us celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. These eight years. Amen. Uh, July the 18th at two o'clock. This Friday, we're scheduled to be in Triangle, Virginia at uh, Open Door Apostle Young's Church. Amen. At 7 p.m. And this Saturday at noon, I'm scheduled to be out at a uh, community uh, revival. It's going to be an outdoor festival uh, that Pastor Frida is having. Amen. And she asked me to speak. Amen. So we'll be out there. Amen. On Fielding Street out there in the park in Sequoia. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So keep us in prayer. Amen. As we pray for you in Jesus' name. Our closing scripture coming from the book of First Timothy, uh, the first chapter, 17th verse. It reads, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. Amen. For this is the Agape Way. God bless you.